Hi, my name is Steve Crown. I'm a, a member of the Microsoft legal and policy team. I uh, work in a group that's actually about defending democracy and advancing human rights. So the talk that I'm going to give today is really about the intersection of facial recognition technologies and what it means for respecting human rights and the consequences it might have for the functioning, literally, of uh, democracies uh, across the globe. One of the realities of any artificial intelligence system and facial recognition as a subset of that is that it truly is a system. There's data that comes in, there's the software that generates uh, pattern extraction, a confidence level that it, it actually knows what it's looking at and is answering the tasks that's given. For example, is this a human face? Or inside facial recognition, there are three specific tasks that actually all of these machines do. One is they uh, simply seem, uh, seek to identify, is there one or more human faces in the image? Another one, though, is can we verify if we already know that somebody's enrolled in the system, is this new image the same person? So it's simply, are you matching? But there's a third one that becomes really interesting, and that is if you have a bunch of images enrolled and now you just have this random image that shows, is, can this one be identified to somebody you already know? And the errors matter in this case. So if it's a false that actually that person was in the database, but you didn't recognize it, they, that might not be a harm. But what if somebody is falsely identified with somebody who is not them? Then you end up in cases uh, of what the consequences might be in the real world. Will police seek to use this sort of data? And what would happen if I'm identified as somebody who has a record of being armed and dangerous? Will I be treated by the police differently on the street? So we do a lot of work, including with law enforcement, to explain the realities of the technology and the possible human rights consequences of using it in inappropriate ways. What happens to freedom of association and freedom of assembly and actually exercise of your democratic rights and forming your beliefs and trying to reform government if you believe you're being surveilled and all the people around you are and with the understanding that uh, these technologies might be making errors. So we've actually called for uh, regulation of these sorts of uses. What is the trade-off we want to have? Are we more concerned about national security, public safety, or more concerned about privacy and anonymity that we've always taken for granted in public spaces. Facial recognition is unlike uh, most other things. You can decide not to leave your fingerprints. It's hard not to have your face with you when you walk around and when you're associating with other people uh, in an open space. How do we explain to the layperson as well as to the experts how our technology is working so they can understand the limitations on its appropriate use where it might go wrong so that it's not deployed in ways that uh, are not going to be optimal. And again, all of these are systems. So we might train a machine, a technical term, but we use a data set to help it get the right sorts of uh, confirmed um, outputs that yes, this is a correct identification of one of the images in it. Um, but when it's actually deployed, you get people who are using entirely new data sets. One of the realities of facial recognition today is that it works really well if you have a, a direct uh, mugshot-like uh, image with correct lighting. But in the real world, of course, people will be getting it from all sorts of angles with different lighting. And then how are people actually going to use it? We need people with an understanding of the limitations of their data set so that they don't overinvest in what the uh, system might be telling them purely from a software perspective.